Holly, I'm going to introduce our speaker this morning. She's not a guest because she's part of the family. Here's what's kind of funny. We, uh, when I was planning out, uh, I tried to plan out our church calendar a couple months in advance. I'm more successful at that sometimes than other times. Uh, but I had, uh, I had planned uh, the speaker to speak this week about two months ago. M- maybe three months ago I had Corey scheduled, but it didn't work out, and he switched. And uh, I had uh, this morning's speaker plan before I knew what I was going to be, the specific messages. I knew this uh, message series. And so last week I preached on the woman question, and I had today's speaker scheduled before I planned that message. Wow. I think Holy Ghost might be doing something. Amen? Yeah. <clears throat> And if you're curious what the woman question is, the answer is yes. Can women? Yes. Yes. But Sarah Pagano is going to bring the word of God today. She is a... Wait, 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 wait. I'm introducing you. I'm introducing you right now. I'm always terrible at doing introductions, so... I'm trying to work this out here before us, you know. So Sarah Pagano is our, uh, she for a long time, for uh, like nine years, was our Revival Kids director. She did an amazing job in Revival Kids, such a great job. We uh, promoted her to be the director of our community life ministry, and uh, she's in charge of all our community life uh, ministries. Uh, For years, she's been a prophetic voice in this house. Um, She's discipled many women, uh, pastored many women, many men. Uh, she's the wife of Corey Pagano, our uh, worship leader. She is the mother of Noah and Ella, who are both just as cute as I don't know what. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, and most importantly, she's a daughter of this house. So if you would welcome Sarah Pagano to come bring the word this morning. Hey. 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 Hello. Oh, there we go. Hey. How are you? You can be seated. I mean, if you want to stand, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) If you would give me a second while I type in my password. Okay, so. (laughs) Oh, I keep doing this wrong. It's not password. We're going to start with some prophetic words. Is that okay? All right. Yeah. Where's Kelly Silva? I saw her. There you are. Can you stand up, please? I just looked at you, and I kept hearing God say, I'm with you. And we can, like, just expect that. But, like, a lot of people serve a God who's not with them. Like, you serve a God who's with you. You know? Like, he wants to be with you. And I just hear him telling me that for you this morning. Like, he's not with you because he has to be. He's with you because he wants to be with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Where is Brandon and Robin? Oh, I don't know where Brandon is. Here. <laughs> He's coming. There you go. Okay. If you guys could stand for me. The wises, whom I love so much. <laughs> I saw um, this picture of angels just kind of like dropping coins in front of you. <laughs> Come on. But for a long time, like, prosperity hasn't been the easiest thing for you. And, like, okay, hold on. Prosperity hasn't necessarily been easy, but you're walking into a season where it's going to be easy. Where it's, like, as simple as just, like, here, like, it was, like, no effort for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, the, the work that you do, like, the hard work that you do, keep doing that. Like, God is totally in that. Yeah. But it's, you're walking into a season that where prosperity is just going to kind of fall into place oh. in a way that you haven't been able to experience. Come on. Come on. And that's what he wants to do in your life in this season. Amen? Amen. 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 Hey. So in Jesus' name, I just release right now <laughs> the, the prosperity that is easy. The prosperity that, that almost takes no effort, but there's still effort in it. God, that you can do what only you can do right here in the wise family, in their finances, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Duke. Hey. (laughs) So I heard very clearly promotion is coming. And part of that is like you can't neglect your history with God. Like you can't, almost like, like, don't walk away from that, from it. Not that you're walking away from God, that's not what I'm saying. But 
don't neglect your history in God because like that is how you got to this place in him. And there's power in that that you're going to release to people this history with God, this longevity that is coming in this promotion. Does that make sense? Amen. I release that in the name of Jesus. I just pray, Lord, for this promotion. God, whatever it looks like, that you would do it. That you would do it, that he would see it, that it would be obvious what the promotion is, what it looks like, God. And that he would not um, neglect this history, that he would just walk in it, in the power. He would see it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I have one more. Hoffa. Hoffa. That's my dog right there. (laughs) So I saw you like this image of you praying with God and you're kind of bringing up like all the reasons why you're not qualified. Like all the reasons why you can't do it or all the reasons why you don't want to do it. And I just hear God saying not, not to disqualify yourself. Like stop doing that. Because... He qualifies you, and that has to be enough. And I heard him say, like, I heard him say that it is finished in your life. Like, this qualification is finished. Like, he's, you're still a work, right? Like, we're all still a work. But it is finished. And if you walk in that, it is finished. The qualification kind of takes the focus off of yourself, you know? And then you just trust God. Does that make sense? Amen. So, Father, I just pray right now in Jesus' name that this ability to, to stop disqualifying herself <laughs> would happen, Lord. I pray that um, she would trust you. She would trust that you've qualified her, God. That she would trust the truth that it is finished in her life. In Jesus' name, yeah. amen. Thank you. Amen. Hi, guys. Love you. I love you. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. So (laughs) if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn to first Peter two. I'm sorry. We're going to be there in a second, but you can turn there. First Peter two, starting in verse nine, I'll be there in a second. I just want to first thank Pastor Carl and Pastor Tracy for this opportunity. It's such an honor to be able to, you know, be up here and minister to my RLC fam. It really, really blesses me. It's really awesome. Who's been blessed by the series so far? Community, right? It has been an amazing, oh, can you start my clock? Thank you. (laughs) It has been such an awesome series. You know, two weeks ago, Pastor Carl started the series, and he talked about we are all in God's community, right? Talked about how Jesus redeems all who believe. And last week, like he shared, he talked about the woman question, which is not actually a question, right? Like he said, yes, can woman, yes, (laughs) right? (laughs) It's not a question. Not actually a question. And a spoiler alert, if you missed it, women can preach, and they don't have to be silent. Amen? Amen. So 1 Peter 2, starting in verse 9, says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 10, For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God, you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Jesus, we love you this morning. Yes, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We pray that you would just be in the midst of everything that I'm saying, Lord. I pray that it would be your words and not mine. I pray that you would open hearts and open ears this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we're continuing our community series today. And what I want to share with you this morning is, you know, why does God want us in a healthy community? How we've been designed for community? but also how there's more for us now that we're connected to community. That there is something, there's a purpose to be drawn out of us within community. Amen? Amen. You know, the the problem is that we live in a society where isolation and independence is very prevalent, right? This idea of being connected, like we think we're connected because we have these devices. Like we can go on social media anytime we want. We can text somebody, we can call somebody. But... If isolation and independence are at an all-time high, in a, in a time where connection is supposed to be easy, right, there's something missing. This is not true connection. Because true connection is found in community, with people. You have to talk and be around people. You know, think about Pastor Carl's message last week with the, with the role of women in the church. 
if half of this room about is women and the enemy is trying to keep half of the community silent, we're not going to have a healthy community. Amen. Like this book is not full of just men speaking, right? Or men sharing or men, like there's man and woman. There's a reason. There's a reason God calls us, right? That we are a people, not just we are a man or we are, you know, like there's a reason God does it like that. And you know, if the enemy's fighting against our communities like this, we have to fight to protect it, right? We've shared about protecting the glory in this church. Like, we have a role to play in protecting what God is doing here in our community, in us. Amen? Because the thing is, God has more for me than me. There is more happening in the world than what I can experience and see in this little space of the earth. Right? There is more for us than just us. Like, newsflash, right? <laughs> Community is coming together with people. That means we can't do it by ourselves. You can't have community and be on your own and be independent. It, it just does not work. And in Genesis 1.26, it says, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. You see all these highlighted words? From the beginning, there was always the Trinity. Yes. Right? Like it doesn't say, it's not God said, let me make man in my image. Right? Us. Our. So... If God isn't alone, right, he has, he has the, right, he's the Father, and he has Jesus, and he has the Holy Spirit, he's literally put himself in a community. Yes. He's literally created things out of a community, like out of community, yes. right? Yes. So if we're made in the image of the Trinity, then that means it's in our very identity that we were created for community. Yes. It is who yes. we are meant to be, yes. right? God's plan for us is this community. And as the director of community life, I am so super passionate about community, about this community at Rob Life Church. I've been a part of it now for almost a decade. Come on. Woo. <laughs> and I'm passionate about everybody, you know, in this church, whether you've not found your place here, where you fit, you know, to find it. Or if you've figured out where you fit in, like to dig your roots even deeper, right? I am super passionate about that. But I'm passionate because there are things that you can only receive in community. There are certain things you can only receive in community. There's a level of grace that you can only experience attached to other people. And when grace comes, you know, grace will change everything. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Like you just get a little bit of grace on it, and it's going to change. Yes. Yes. Right? <laughs> and this morning, I really, I just want to invite you all into this value of community because it, it will change your life. You catch it, and you get, like, what God does in a group of people is more than what I can do on my own. It's huge. And as I was working this week on my work, I use my laptop and I use, I have a desktop computer at my house. And over the course of a few days, I'm working and doing stuff. And I kept getting this error message that said trying to connect, like popping up on the screen. And it wasn't like I was opening a program that wasn't connecting. Like I was already typing and doing stuff. And it would just pop up. And it was happening for a few days in a row. So eventually I'm like, okay, God, are you trying to tell me something? Because I live a prophetic life. Yes. So that looks like God speaking to me in random things like this. Yeah. Yeah. And I recognize that. Right? I recognize how God talks to me so I know to ask the question. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you can all do that too. Amen. Um, but I kept seeing this. So I asked God, you know, what, what's going on? And immediately I saw this image of a square peg trying to be jammed into this round hole. Like forcing it. Right? And... For so many of us, this is us. We're just trying to fit, right? We just want to belong. Every person, whether you recognize it or not, you're just going around trying to belong. Trying to belong to people, trying to find your people, right? Trying to fit in. This was me, like, you know, most people in this room could probably say middle school, right? It's tough, and this is where you, that, that kind of happens, right? High school, like, I just spent those years of my life just coming under whatever the people around me said. Yeah. Like, oh, we're going to listen to this music? Well, okay. Oh, we're going to this club? Okay. Like, I just want to fit. Yeah. I just wanted to fit in with people, and I didn't know what to do, so I just did what they did. Yeah. <laughs> right? But the problem with that is that you're not being yourself. That's right. You're not being the real you. Yes. Because 
what God showed me was that he has every kind of adapter. So if we've got this square peg trying to fit into a round hole, well, that's fine because God actually called you to be a square peg. If he called you to be a round hole, you would be one, right? And you would fit where you're trying to force it. That makes sense? <laughs> Amen. When we recognize, like, the real us, right, then we can value what unique thing we have to bring to the community, what unique thing we have to offer, right? And we're just trying to find our people. That's what most everyone's doing. You just want to belong, right? You just want to find your people. And if you say yes to community, if you say yes to this connection, God meets you there. He doesn't tell you to do it just to go, right? He goes, he meets you there. Because there is a grace we've been, you know, maybe you're recognized like an area of your life where there's no grace. You're just feeling like, am I missing the grace somewhere? That area of your life might be separated from community. If there's a grace you're needing and you're not seeing it, maybe do a little heart check. Like, am I connected to people here in this area of my life? Am I, am I accountable here? Wow. Right? Because there are certain things you can only attain in community. And part of that is figuring out, you know, who your people are. And it's in God's people, right here, that we find our people. Yeah. Because in community, you find a family. It's right here in this community where you're going to find your people. Let's go back to our verse. In 1 Peter 2, verse 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see all these highlighted words are capital, right? Yes. So that means Peter's quoting the Old Testament when you see capital words like that. So going back and looking for where these, these verses and these phrases actually originate, like Deuteronomy and Isaiah, you see something in common. God is always talking to a group of people. He's not talking to an individual person, right? And in the Old Testament, you know, God's chosen. They're talking about Israel. But now this is in the New Testament. So that's us. The New Testament believers are the chosen people of God. Amen. And this royal priesthood, it's a whole body of believers. It's all plural. That's the point I'm trying to make. This is all plural. This is not individual, okay? And Peter recognized this grace that you attain when you walk with other people, right? And he's just imparting that here. Like there is more in community than you contain on your own. And we need to recognize that we, collectively, we are chosen, are chosen, present tense. That's unchanging. There was never a moment in your life where you were never not chosen by God. There was never a moment where you weren't chosen. And yes, like the journey is yours, right? The journey is individually yours. But people don't make it on the journey on their own. I'm going to keep saying this. We need people right? You cannot make it on your own because he doesn't call individuals. He calls families. He calls communities. He calls groups because we find our purpose and the purpose of the collective, right? You know, in, in our church, we're called to connect people to um, the presence and the power of God. That's not just Pastor Carl and Pastor Tracy's call. That's this church's call. It's not an individual person's call. It's all of our calls, Right? To some degree, we are called to connect people to the presence and power of God. Now, it might look different. Maybe you're not the one, you know, preaching on stage, but you're still called to do that, right? And this connection is not meant to be so complicated, this, this ability to connect and find your family, you know, like the square peg in the round hole. It's not meant to be forced like that. It doesn't have to be so difficult. But sometimes we overcomplicate things, and then we can't see clearly, Right? But you find where you fit, and you figure out, like, what little area you need to go to, then stuff just kind of clicks. It just makes sense. It's a little easier. And for me personally, the, one of the best ways I felt like I really got connected and found my people was making friends. Right? When I got saved, I was 19, and I dropped everybody. <laughs> 
Like I didn't know what to do. Like it was, it felt so radical. Like I just had no idea. Like it was all new. Everything was new. And I was like, I got here and I was scared, but like I knew it was real and I would hide. <laughs> but like, I recognized that there was something here for me, even though I was scared of it, I stayed, you know? And I found friends here that have completely changed my life. You know, this community has completely changed my life. And, you know, Jesus performed a miracle with friends. Have you ever seen this? No one talks about Jesus' miracle of having 12 close friends in his 30s. (laughs) Like, this connection is not meant to be so complicated. Like, this is only funny because it's so hard. Right? Like, this idea of having close friends is difficult. Like, maybe you have one or two. Like, he had 12. You know? Like, it's not meant to be so complicated. Because God is going to bring people into the community that you need in your life. But also who need you. Also who who need what you have, what you carry. And that's part of what friends, you know, in a community are for. You guys know David? He's pretty cool, right? He's pretty cool. He's in the Bible. If you don't know him, look him up. <laughs> it's significant to, to recognize that when it was time for David to fulfill his call, God did not send him an army or a platform or a fortune. He sent him a friend. He sent Jonathan. There is something about other people bringing what you need to help you fulfill your purpose that we need to catch, right? Look to your left and your right. See people around you, right? Your breakthrough could be in that person sitting directly next to you. (laughs) Your breakthrough is found in community. I need you to catch this. Your breakthrough is most likely in one of the people sitting around you. So often we think, you know, whatever we need from God is kind of like appear, right? Or someone's just going to walk up and hand it to us or fall from the sky, right? But we need to look for who God has put in our life. That's the thing. David recognized who God sent him. Right? He could have so easily dismissed it because, like, not for nothing, this guy's dad is trying to kill him. Like, multiple times. Right? Like, he's trying to kill him. And David recognizes this friend. (laughs) You have to recognize who God sent you. We have to be open to this connection, figuring out our family so we can be open to who God is sending us. And sometimes it looks like desensitizing ourselves a little bit because it's easy to get familiar. It's easy to get tired in it, like keeping up with the connection, right? It's easy to kind of just let it go. But we have to desensitize ourselves because a lot of places don't have the kind of community we have here. And if we keep being fam- so familiar with this with each other, we could miss what gift God is helping us either call out of them or them call out of us. Yeah. Right? Yes. And when we're around people, you know, it's, everyone goes through stuff, right? Yeah. Struggles and things. And being in a family, it makes it a little easier, right? Because we can't choose our struggle, only our friends. We don't, amen. (laughs) We don't get to choose what we go through in life, but we do get to choose who we go through it with. Because there's a family that you're born into, and there's a family you choose. I love the family I was born into. But I'm really thankful the family I got to choose, too. Right? (laughs) Do you remember Paula? She was here a few weeks ago. She was awesome. She is awesome. Um, she said something a few weeks ago that really stuck with me. She, she said, people come to church for God, but stay because of family. Family makes things sticky. Right? Like, you come, and if you're not connected, it's so easy to just kind of, like, church hop. And just kind of mosey in and out. But you, you get with people who are now your family. You're going to stay. You're going to feel like, There's more here for me than just, you know, coming and sitting and leaving, right? Psalm 68, 6 says that God makes a home for the lonely. We have no reason to do it by ourselves. We were literally created to be in community. 
from the very beginning. There is no reason for us to do this by ourselves. Anyone in here with a family can probably testify to this. Family can be messy, right? It can get a little messy. But the thing is about community and the family you find here, it's not meant to be pretty. Like, we're not meant to be perfect at it. Because in community, you get real and you get healed. That's what happens in community when you find your family. Now you can get real and you can get healed. 1 Peter 2.10 says... (laughs) For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. I mean, what a transformation. Like, you're not the people. Oh, now you're the people. <laughs> you had not received mercy. Oh, guess what? Now you have. Like, simple. Okay? <laughs> if he's talking about us now as a chosen race, right, if that's us, and we're the believers, So if we were once not the believers, right, we can say that we were not a people who say not the believers, now we are the believers. Then this isolation we're experiencing in our outer world, which is once we're separated from God, when we were separated, right, we were not connected to a family. That's a direct reflection of what's happening in our inner world. We're broken. We're separated. We had not received mercy, right? We were broken. And the problem is that isolation will just keep you broken, The only goal of isolation is to keep you down. That's the only goal that isolation has and that fear has is to keep you broken and keep you down. But community will keep you from being stagnant. Community will lift you up. Community doesn't want you to stay broken. Community wants you to be real and be healed, right? So, you know, if we are separated from God before we're the people of God and we're not, we have not received mercy, then what are we receiving? Judgment, bitterness, shame, offense, all the sad words, right? (laughs) Well, what happens now when those things meet the mercy of God? Healing and transformation. Now that we have become the people of God, we have received mercy, now we have opened the door for healing and transformation. Amen? And we received this mercy so we could be a people. Not so we can be alone and healed. I mean, that's great. I want everyone to be healed and whole, right? But not to be alone. It's because God is building something in us here that requires a whole collective group of healed and whole people. Right? So we can give that away. That's the purpose. When I looked up this um, word mercy in Greek, eleo, I hope I said that right. That word translates to a few different phrases in mercy, right? So it says to have mercy on, to obtain mercy, to show mercy, have compassion, have compassion on, or receive mercy. It's this pattern we see of giving and receiving mercy, not just receiving it all for ourselves. It's giving and receiving to show mercy, right? To receive mercy. That's, that's the opposite a little bit. It's about this communal mercy that we have received collectively. Meaning it's mercy for all of us. Not just for one person to be healed. For all of us. Amen? Amen. And this kind of mercy that I'm talking about is you can only attain it in community. Because it requires you to be a people first. Community is about sharing stuff. Sharing common beliefs, right? We're connected by, you know, the fact that we believe in Jesus. Right? Right? We're all the same church, so we're connected by that. We're sharing that. But it's also about sharing maybe struggles, sharing experiences, sharing testimonies. He wants us to give away what we have. That's what sharing is, right? And the purpose of community is to create a safe place where people can share with one another. That's one of our goals in in this community. You ever think about the fact that no one needs to be taught how to be selfish? Like, kids come out the womb selfish, and they stay selfish for a long time. It's been four years now. (laughs) But we have to learn how to share. (laughs) I won't name any names, but they're over there. (laughs) We have to learn how to share. That's right. 
right? And vulnerability is something that requires us to share. And community is about vulnerability. It's a big, scary word, right? Being vulnerable. But vulnerability is actually having the courage to show up and be seen even when you don't know the outcome. Because we're taught that vulnerability is weakness. Don't share. You're going to look like you don't have it all together. Well, surprise, I don't. You know? <laughs> but vulnerability is actually courageous. Vulnerability has this, this is just really awesome. Because it draws people in. So imagine you have something you're going through a struggle, and you're sharing it with somebody. And that person then responds with, oh, me too. Well, guess what you've just done? You've completely displaced isolation in their life and your own life. Because now there's a connection you have with this person because you recognize like, oh, I don't have it all figured out. Neither do they. This is my people. Come on. <laughs> Because vulnerability causes you to be known, yeah. right? And it can be scary. If being loved and known is hard for you, like that's scary. That was me for a very long time. But fear says that you can't be loved or fully known because then you're going to be rejected. Yeah. But that's a lie. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But you, the truth is that you can be loved and fully known. Like, we're afraid that if we're fully known, we can't be loved because something's wrong with us. Well, nobody in this room is perfect. Right? That's the truth. You can be fully known and loved at the same time. But so often we're scared of being vulnerable because there's shame that's attached to whatever it is that we need to be vulnerable about. But the problem with shame is that, like mold, it grows in darkness. So we keep it in the dark. We keep these things that we don't, we're afraid to be vulnerable about. It's just going to grow. That's all it can do. We don't want shame. No. <laughs> shame is not fun. Yeah. But there's good news. In 1 John 1, 7, it says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So getting healed and getting real in community looks like walking in the light. You can't walk in the light by yourself. The verse says, Jesus walked in the light. He has constant fellowship with God and the Holy Spirit. This walking in the light looks like being honest, looks like being real, right, with yourself, being real with other people. And that will open you up to this fellowship. I looked this word up also in Greek. And the word for this is koinonia. And this term in this verse literally translates to participation. The word fellowship literally translates to participation. So that means if this, so this verse is saying if we walk in the light, then we're participating with each other. Yeah. <laughs> right? We have to be active in our fellowship. Yeah. We can't passively enter into this. Yeah. We have to be active in it. And just being, you know, in community we like that term, right? Just being there isn't enough. You might be thinking like, but I go to church most Sundays. But I have friends. I hang out with people. Or I do these things. I go to the, you know, beach picnics and whatever. But how many of you know you can be around a group of people and not be present with them? How many people could probably say you've sat around a dinner table when everybody's staring at this thing and nobody is in fellowship with one another? You're in fellowship with whatever you're doing on your phone, right? You can be sitting around a group of people and not be connected. Because physical presence does not mean participation. Being fully present means participation. But physical presence, my body is here, does not mean you're participating. Because you can fake community. You can totally fake it. You can totally come and put your church clothes on and your happy face and no one will know anything that's happening in your life and you leave. But you cannot fake walking in the light. You cannot fake walking in the light. Think, think about it like, 
you know, you, you need a job, okay? And you're afraid because there's some shame attached to that for some reason. And you're afraid to tell people you need a job or you're looking for something. And everyone's, you know, you come to church and everyone's asking you, how are you? How are you? And you always respond, good. I'm fine. Everything's good. But like I said before, if your breakthrough is in the person next to you and you're not sharing what's actually going on in your life, like what if the person next to you has a job for you? What if the person you meet in the lobby over coffee has a job they can give you? But we're not being vulnerable. We're just composing ourselves falsely like everything's good and it's not. And that's not walking in the light. You can't really fit in if you're not being your real self. You can't really get in where you're supposed to be if you're not being yourself. Because only the real you can have real fellowship. Amen. (laughs) If you bring your life into the light you're going to find that real fellowship. If we're not scared, and we actually just take that scary step, right, and just open up the vulnerability or whatever and bring our life into the light, then we're going to have real fellowship if we let it. And lastly this morning, in community, I want to talk about in community, your purpose is drawn out of you. Let's go back to our verse. And 1 Peter 2, 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is our purpose, right? To proclaim the excellencies of Jesus. And community is meant to empower us to do that. But like I said a million times already, it's not meant to be complicated. Manifesting your purpose on the earth is proclaiming the excellencies of Jesus. And that might look like serving. That might look like figuring out your spiritual gifts and using them. That might look like having a healthy relationship with your spouse. Being a good parent. (laughs) Being a good employee. Being a good friend, right? Being a good employer. These are all ways that you manifest your purpose on the earth. Therefore, you're proclaiming the excellencies of Jesus. Amen? Amen? You know, our our hospitality team comes faithfully every Sunday morning at 7.30 to make coffee. And all God's people said, amen. (laughs) And they come and they make the coffee, right? They recognize a need. And this church needs coffee. If you know, if you're here, you know, we need it. (laughs) I see lots of coffees going up. We need it. But what is so amazing about this thing that we think, maybe we're just feeling a need, right? We're just feeling a need. We're just making coffee. But now that coffee is a place of connection. Now there's people gathered around the cool little, whatever they're called, things. (laughs) Carafes, right? I don't know. Thank you. Coffee pots, much better. (laughs) You know, but now we're gathered around there. And maybe there's some encouragement happening. Maybe there is someone sharing and being vulnerable and sharing a struggle, right? There's there's now a point of connection that is more than just filling the need of coffee. And, you know, you will notice the needs that you're called to fill. You will notice the needs that you are called to fill. And you get in community long enough. You stand still long enough. And you will notice things around you that you think are a need. Well, yeah, because you're probably called to fill them. Right? You're going to notice the need you're called to fill. That's why you're here then. You recognize what the need is around you. You know, I served in Revival Kids for nine years. And this truth that in community you find your purpose, right? Your purpose is drawn out of you. That is so true for my life. I am not the same person that I am right now that I was nine years ago when I was asked to serve in Revival Kids. My purpose unfolded, you know, before my eyes over the last 10 years. 
because I was connected to people who could draw it out of me. Because I said yes to God and served the children. You know? If I hadn't done that, if I didn't, you know, start serving somewhere to figure out, you know, what, what I'm good at, right? That's a good way to figure out what you're good at, is serving somewhere. If I didn't do that, I would have no idea what was inside of me. Because I needed people to draw it out. Because I was too afraid to see it for myself. Does that make sense? Because community will show you who you are when you can't see it for yourself. You guys know the story in Acts 3? Peter and John are walking to the temple, right? They're coming up to the temple, and they approach the gate, and there's a lame beggar on the floor at the gate. And what does Peter do? He says, I do not have silver and gold, right? But what I do have, I give to you. Stand up and walk. And what is so crazy about this story is that this guy woke up needing to be carried to this gate to beg for money. But by the end of his encounter with Peter and John, he was fulfilling his purpose. He was walking and leaping and praising God. He was walking in his purpose now because people from a community did something. They came and they, did, they gave away what they, could ha- what they had to give, which was healing. They helped draw his purpose out of him. And we have to be in community to fulfill the call of God in our life. Because like I said before, it's part of who we are. We can't fulfill it separated from people because that's part of what we're supposed to do. And when you say yes to community, you're saying, you're saying yes to more than just friends, to more than just family. You're saying yes to this communal grace, this communal mercy that you cannot receive separated from people, that you cannot receive separated from the group. Because there's relationships that God has set out for you to have to fulfill your purpose. Today at three, we have our potluck, right? Woo! Yeah. Yay. Food and friends. friends. A potluck only works if everybody brings their portion. Right? And if you sign up to bring rolls and you decide to stay home, well, then guess what? You're only eating rolls. (laughs) I don't know why the word roll sounds so weird now. (laughs) But if you, if you bring your rolls and you come, you know, to the community picnic and you bring your portion, now everybody in the community has a full meal come on. based off of one thing that you brought. Everybody gets to in, in be in, having that full meal. Because the thing about community is that you have to show up to reap the benefits of it. You have to be a part. You have to bring your portion. You have to bring what unique thing you value, what valuable thing you bring to the table. Amen? Because there is a, there is a grace. I can't hit this enough. There is a grace that God is only going to pour out in community. We need it. Because there, the days are coming in Boca Raton where people are going to see what God is doing here. And we are called to carry it. We are called to bring it and share it, right? And draw people in and help people get connected to community and connected to what God is doing here. Because it's more than just about us. Like I said before, God is more for me than me. Right? It's more than just about our healing, our transformation, our needs getting met. It's because the world needs this. The world needs to know what God is doing right here. So we value relationships. We value connection, right? We find our family. We recognize that now we're with our people. We've got our people. And then because we do that, we can get real and we can get healed. And then because God is still so good, our purpose is now able to be drawn out of us because we said yes to him. Amen? Would you stand with me? I'm going to pray for you. Amen. It, 
if you are looking for ways like how can I get more connected or how can I, you know, dig my roots a little deeper, I'm going to be outside in the lobby after service with the connections team. And we would love to help you see where your next steps are going to be in this church or how you can just kind of dig a little deeper. Amen. So put your hands out like you're going to receive something because I believe that God is here and he has something to give this morning. Amen. Amen. Wow. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we honor you. God, I pray that this value of community would be imparted this morning. I pray that that for us who feel like we're connected, we would just dig our roots deeper. And I pray for the for those of us who might feel like we're not sure exactly where we fit, but we're here. I pray that you would show us where we fit that we would be real, that we would be open to the healing, we would be open to being real, we would, we would just love this family, God. And I thank you that within this, your, your purpose that you have for each of us is drawn out. And I pray that you would continue to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Beautiful, beautiful message. Woo, stay where you are for one moment, if you would, please. Wow, amazing, amazing, amazing word today. You can tell that's, uh, that's not just something that she found in a, on a website or a book. That's a, it's a life message, amen? So good. Hey, I want to I wanna just uh, two quick things. Number one, we have our picnic this afternoon. And, you know, I, I want you to call a friend maybe who's been away from church, away from Jesus maybe, and uh, just see if they want to go to a picnic this afternoon. See if they, you know, this community is something that, God is drawing them into so they don't have to be alone in life anymore. Likewise, I want to challenge you, get some, get some invitation cards on the way out. If you really value community, we want to bring other people into it and show them this resource that God has given us for our lives. And last but not least, third thing is a uh, gift of hope. Take, take, a, uh, take one of the little ornament papers out there. Let's fulfill somebody's holiday wishes. Ministry team, if you'll come forward, if you need prayer for anything in your life, if it's scary for you to join community, maybe. Uh, maybe you need some help this holiday season, or maybe you need breakthrough in your life, or you need healing in your body. They'd love to minister to you. And also, you know, go to lunch with somebody. Make sure you talk to somebody on the way out and say, hey, I'm going to see you today at the picnic, right? I'm going to see you today at the picnic. I'm going to see you. We're going we're gonna to start living life together. Father, we love you. We thank you for what you're doing here. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for your love. We thank you that we were a people who didn't have mercy, but now we have received mercy. At one point, we were not a people, but now we are the people of God, and we're so thankful for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Give another clap offering the Lord. We love you. Have a great day. I'll see you at 3 o'clock.